You're listening to an Airwave Media Podcast. All set for your flight? Yep, I've got everything I need. Eye mask, neck pillow, T-Mobile, headphones. Wait, T-Mobile? You bet. Free in-flight Wi-Fi. 15% off all Hilton brands. I never go anywhere without T-Mobile. Same goes from a water bottle, chewing gum, nail clippers, okay, passport. Okay, I'm going to leave you to it. Find out how you can experience travel better at T-Mobile.com slash travel. Qualifying plan required. Wi-Fi were available on select U.S. airlines. Deposit and Hilton Honors membership required for 15% discount. Terms and conditions apply. Welcome to From Beneath the Hollywood Sign. If you love old movies, Hollywood history, or the golden age of filmmaking, you've come to the right place. This is the podcast that talks about amazing stories of Tinseltown from another era and fascinating conversations with writer-producer Steve Kubine and actress-writer Nan McNamara. So, Steve, did Ava Gardner and Howard Hughes have a good relationship? Well, they did until he dislocated her jaw. What? Well, don't worry. She hit him back with an ashtray. From Beneath the Hollywood Sign is the gin joint for you. Recorded in Chicago, Illinois, with your hosts, Ken, Matt, Neil, and Jeff, this is Triviality. The cream of the crop! Hello and welcome to Triviality, the game where lack of seriousness meets a little bit of knowledge. My name is Neil, and I'm joined in the studio by Ken and Jeff. How's it going, Jeff, specifically? Pretty good. How are you, Neil? Good. And Ken, how are you? I'm, I'm a little ticked off that I got uh, second place here. Well, you did take off your jacket. You said you were a little warm. Which Hi, is... Neil. How you doing? I'm doing all right. <laughs> I'm doing all right. Uh, but uh, Matt is not here, but he's in L.A., so he's coming to us over Skype. How are you doing over there, Matt? Uh, it's early. Very consistent appearances from Matt from L.A. Right. It's like he, yeah, he, he would rather be on the show from far away and not have to be in the same room with us. I don't blame him. That was 100% the reason. Yeah, people don't work on Sundays out in L.A. We just have brunch, so I don't have to do that till like 11. So nice. I'm good. Well, I love that you have a mirror behind you, too, so we can uh, we can see you at your computer chair, and at least you're wearing pants. So that's good. He's yeah, not wearing you. pants. Well, well, that's up to the, to the <laughs> listeners to decide. They can imagine whichever way they want to go. Uh, but we have, a, we have a special guest in studio with us today. Uh, she's a Cruiserweight champion on Patreon, and we appreciate her support. But most of all, she reached out to us on Twitter. She has an awesome radio show and many other things going on, and that's Jill Hopkins. How's it going, Jill? Hi, Neil. Hi, guys. How are you? Hi. Good. Excited. I'm excited. I like having people in the studio. Yes, we're very excited to have you here. Uh, you have so many things going on uh, that we want to talk about. Uh, so why don't you give us uh, the rundown of uh, all the cool things you're doing? I host a, a radio show in Chicago on uh, Vocalo Radio. Uh, which is the sister station of WBEZ Radio, which is the NPR affiliate in town. Uh, so I get to, you know, play a lot of awesome local music, uh, meet a lot of really interesting people, learn something new every day. I just uh, took over the reins for the new uh, the new podcast in the making series from WBEZ. So I'll be hosting the Making Beyonce podcast. Very cool. Uh, awesome. Uh, that's no pressure, because, you know, that's a really easy fan group to, to please. It's oh, the yeah. Beehive. The, ba- yeah, you know. the Beehive, yep. <laughs> I, uh, I'm really excited about that. I play in a couple of, like, rock bands here in town. Uh, uh, the most recent one, Whole Lot of Love. It was Halloween, not that long ago. And we played the music of, of Courtney Love and Whole. And, uh, <laughs> Love it. I, uh, I'm, I live to tell the tale. And I'm really excited to be here with you guys. She's yeah, a jail of all coming. trades. Yes, well, she is. Since you work with uh, WBEZ and NPR, maybe you can tell me. Uh, every time I turn on NPR, there's like a 30% chance that Antonio Banderas is doing an interview. <laughs> I was curious why that, that might be. Have you, heard the his, inside scoop. have you heard his speaking voice? Yes, I have. Why wouldn't you want to have that yeah. on the radio all the time? Growing up in Spain, I... Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> when you're stuffed, you splones. <laughs> we all just have allergies, so he's there really to help us out. He re- yeah, he, he must just have endless a- amount of allergies, and it's just always <laughs> there. Poor man. Poor that man. Poor, poor man. Just give him some Mucinex. Uh, well, thank you very much for joining us. Uh, we appreciate it, and we can't wait to hear more about the Beyonce podcast. Maybe we'll we'll play a little trailer today, depending on how the game goes. And we'll see. Yeah, you can tell us how that goes. <laughs> I, I voiced it, but the people who put it together, I'm sure, would be more than happy to hear it on some other in some other context It'd yeah great. No, maybe, maybe after the show she can also teach us some mic discipline yes yeah. yes we would love that <laughs> we'll see i don't have much myself <laughs> <laughs> uh and uh, our very special guest host today uh is someone who's been on the show a few times uh it's united states champion on patreon caitlin joyce how's it going caitlin it's going really well how are you guys great thanks we're doing great uh we see you're in your bills jersey today getting ready for the game against the browns Yep. Hopefully they win. We don't know because honestly, they could 
do a Bills thing and not win. <laughs> but I feel like both teams playing each other can either do a Browns thing or a Bills thing. So you just hope it's it's in your favor. The Bears won in on that this it's year really too. Really yeah. a toss up. <laughs> Yes, exactly. All um, the B teams. You've been up to a lot recently. We talked a little bit about uh, about what's going on before we recorded, but uh, you just completed something pretty crazy. Uh, yeah. So I was actually um, back in sep- uh, No, I was actually back in June. It's been a while since I've been on the show. Um, but I did a half Ironman this summer. Um, it was actually. I want to say it's like my fifth one I've done. So. I'm- I'm like, yeah, I'm good. Um, <laughs> I'm, I'm good. I'm good with doing distance for a while. Uh, yeah, so I did that this summer. Uh, although our swim was canceled because of uh, bad weather, but at mm. least got to do the bike and the run portion. Oh, there you go. Well, and uh, last time when you were talking about that, you really inspired me and Jeff because uh, we felt like pieces of shit. So you told us how long it was, and uh, we started cycling a lot this summer. So thank you. I think we we uh, we both got some endurance, right, Jeff? Jeff? Yes. Oh, I thought he was dead. <laughs> I will not be cycling. I'm still tired, even though we haven't done it in a while. I'll watch you cycle, but I will not cycle. I'll we'll drive next. Up. I'll drive next to you in a sweatsuit and screaming, yell, screaming out of a megaphone. Yeah. I'll get you like an electric-powered bicycle or something. Okay, I'll do that. That sounds like a deal. Um, uh, well, Caitlin, thank you for joining us in writing a game today. Is there anything special we should know, or is it uh, a general knowledge game? Yeah, general knowledge, normal format, nothing special. Um, yeah, that's it. All right. Uh, you, know, you know who knows a lot about our uh, general format? I think it's the rules guy. Uh, can we ask him to do it in the uh, the tone of Beyonce? Uh, or Antonio Banderas. Or How an- about half and half? <laughs> half and half Beyonce. Uh, uh, the uh, rules of the game are simple. A Beyonderas. Okay. <laughs> rules guy, please. <laughs> the rules of the game are simple. 20 questions split into two rounds worth 10 points apiece. At halftime, there'll be a special swing round designed by this week's host. After regulation, players will enter the final round with the points that they've accumulated and will have a chance to wager 0 to 30 points on five categorized questions. At the end of the game, someone will be named the cream of the crop. You know that I'm the cream of the crop. Yeah, pretty good. That's pretty good. <laughs> Not as congested as we would have liked, yeah. but... <laughs> More flonase. <laughs> yes. Uh, well, Caitlin, uh, it's going to be uh, me and Jill versus Jeff and Ken. Uh, Jill, what is our team name? Oh, we're called uh, Santa's Butter. Okay, Santa's Butter. Uh, Any particular reason for that, Neil? Well, I'll let Jill explain it. <laughs> <laughs> so I was in a band called Satan, <laughs> which I wasn't really sure you could say on the radio. We'll and it was this, it. Yeah, it was we'll... this all, uh, all-girl band, and we were just like, what will be a name that no one will forget? Mm-hmm. And also, when they see us play, will make no sense in relation <laughs> to the name. But so we played a show. Uh, there was a, a couple of the girls in the band were music teachers, and we had to play a show for the kids. And we couldn't figure out what to call ourselves. So Santa's butter it was, which somehow sounds filthier. It yeah, it's it's kind of gross. I think I saw a movie once called. <laughs> <laughs> I bet wouldn't surprise me, Ken. Uh, what well, are you, uh, you going to be? Jeff and I are going to be uh, the BFFFs, mm-hmm. uh, the third F. Uh, you can leave to your imagination as to what that stands for. Ooh, a lot of imagination in this game today. I like it. Uh, well, Caitlin, uh, let's uh, go from imagination to reality and let's uh, hear these questions. Look at that. Look at that transition, guys. Mm. <laughs> it's better if you don't have to call it out. I know. <laughs> he won't cycle, but he will segue. There you that, Oh, there ah! it is. Finally, oh, professional over. around here. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's get started with a question in the category of food and drink. Nolan Bushnell, a co founder of Atari, also founded what pizza chain that was founded in 1970, 1977? Hey, reluctant. Reluctant. Okay, so Jill, you wrote down Pizza Hut. Yeah, I, although well, I'm just judging by architecture here. Every Pizza Hut looks like it was built in 1977. Yeah, that's a good that's a good point. Yeah, I was think, trying to think of old pizza places, and I don't even know how old Little Caesars is. So I don't either. I, I think we should just go with Pizza Hut. It's pretty classic. It's very 80s. Yeah, let's see it. Okay, let's, let's book it. We'll lock in with Pizza Hut. All right. Well, since the man was into some gaming, we uh, picked a chain named after a game and went with Domino's. Domino's. That was our full reasoning. All right. So the answer is actually Chuck E. Cheese. Oh, oh, oh Charles Entertainment Cheese. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot he was involved in that. I forgot they had pizza. Uh, <laughs> well, it's, it, is it pizza, it's, Matt? It's, it's barely called pizza. I really wanted to put air quotes around pizza. <laughs> Bring me pizza, mouse. It is a hot the... circle of 
something. Filth. Ugh. The Chuck E. Cheese mouse once applied at my store wearing the full costume. So he had had enough apparently and came over to my Starbucks what? and applied <laughs> in person. Is that for real? That is for real. Did that he have the head me. on? I didn't, uh, no, he's not allowed to take that off. It was the illusion <laughs> for the children. Did, well, the real question is, did you hire him? No, absolutely not. He was a rat. <laughs> That's the most horrifying interview ever. <laughs> You yeah. gotta worry about those health codes, right? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Sorry, sir. We have a no rat policy. All right. So, question number two is in potent potables. Chambord is a liquor used in cocktails and sometimes in desserts. But what fruit flavor flavors this liquor? Okay, we're locked in. I don't know why cherries on the on the tip of my tongue. I feel like it's very, um, I don't know, French for an alcohol. I think maybe passion fruit, but That's also I've never too. had just like a standalone passion fruit, so I really know. Um, uh, how about this? It's also a dark red color, and I don't think it is. passion fruit mm, is. Good to know. I think... Uh, too late. Let's let's go. You you were, you didn't want to get wrong on the first one. Let's go cherry, and if I'm wrong, then we'll both be over, over one. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We just uh, have never heard of this, so we just guessed orange. Uh, yeah, Chambord is flavored, uh, is a raspberry flavored. Oh, mm. I hate things that are raspberry flavored. Me too. And that's, raspberries. That's Yeah, that's why I didn't think yeah. of it. Yeah. Okay, good to know. Is that what's on your desk, Caitlin, that you're drinking right now? Just a big oh, cup of it. Oh, yeah. absolutely, yes. Out of, out, of, out of my mug. It's definitely not coffee. It's Chambord. <laughs> Just a that's big what old I glass. just drink straight. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, so your third question in the first round is in history. In 1814, allies against Napoleon captured Paris and forced him to abdicate. He was exiled to which island located off the coast of Tuscany? This is terrible. I've We're ri- locked in. Oh, no. I've written this question two, two different ways, and I cannot remember it. She said? Yeah, there's two answers. He was, he was exiled to an island, and then he lived and died on an island. I think one of them is Helena, and the other one is... Um, I'm willing to... Go with whatever it is okay. that you want. I have no idea. This is normally when I say Jeff, just answer, which mm-hmm. he did for Ken. Uh, and Ken knew this. False. Knows. Ken, Ken knows had this it. Ooh, Ken had it. Uh, let's just go Helena. I know it's wrong. Sure. And Caitlin can fill us in on what I said wrong. So Yeah. So uh, some people know that my favorite book is The Count of Monte Cristo. And the opening uh, acts of Count of Monte Cristo focus on Napoleon being on the island of Elba. Elba. Oh, mm. Yep. So the correct answer is Elba. Mm. Um, I believe his second exile was to St. Helena. Okay. At least yeah. I was right. He went somewhere named Helena. <laughs> but uh, that's where Idris Elba was born, on the so island the way, of Elba. Oh. And the way I always remember that is there's a fun palindrome. Uh, it's uh, Napoleon was supposed to have said, uh, Abel was I, ere I saw Elba. So I'm not going to remember that, but I appreciate it. Oh, that's it. so easy to remember. Thanks, Jeff. <laughs> <laughs> so your fourth question in the round is in literature. The Wheel of Time series was originally penned by Robert Jordan and was intended to be six volume series. He expanded to 11 books before dying during his planned finale of this 12th book. The series was picked up and completed by this famous fantasy author known for his own series, The Stormlight Archive. We're, we're going to take a guess and lock in because we don't know, but uh, I'm just guessing a uh, fantasy author, I think. Have you heard of Wheel of Time? It really just sounds like a prog rock album to me. <laughs> yes. <yeah. laughs> I, yeah, I haven't heard of the Stormlight Archive or Wheel of Time, but that's a lot of books. I'm, I just, I'm trying to think of fantasy authors who have like a prolific career. I, know. I, I really do enjoy saying the name Philip K. Dick. Like yeah. it's just a fun three words to say. Uh, yeah. I love Philip K. Dick. So, but I'm sure that's wrong. I also just want people to read Octavia Butler if they haven't. Ooh, that's good. Even though I don't think that's the answer. Let's go with that so more people know who okay. who that is. So Octavia Butler, we'll sock it in. And uh, Ken and I were thinking that this might be Patrick Rothfuss. So we said Rothfuss. Uh, yeah. So originally I was going to ask a Patrick Rothfuss question and then I didn't. So I changed it to a different fancy <laughs> author. It's, the answer is Brandon Sanderson. That's Ooh. right. Brandon Sanderson. All right. Well, let's, let's hope this might be better for somebody, but uh, <laughs> may not be. Uh, so your next question in round one is in movies. Humphrey Bogart is a Hollywood icon and was even named the greatest male star of classic American cinema by AFI. 
He was in numerous films, but which was his only film where he won an Academy Award? So, Neil, you're locked in, I take it? Um, I think so. Are you good with that? Yep, I am. Okay. So, weren't we, weren't we talking about this the other day? And uh, I think Neil said he didn't win for African Queen, but then it turned out that he did. That sounds right to me. Okay, let's go with African <laughs> Queen. Yeah, I, I always mix up if he won for African Queen or uh, Treasure of uh, Sierra Madre, and, uh, and I always go back and forth. And then luckily, the question that we did get asked, uh, it reminded me and hit me in the head. So I, we went with African Queen. Uh, yeah, so your correct answer is a- the African Queen. Sweet. On the board. He actually he actually wasn't even nominated for uh, Sierra Madre. It's a shame. Because he thought, sucked shame. in it. <laughs> <laughs> I told Humphrey. <laughs> oh, you mean John Houston? Oh, no, you're being uh, Catherine Hepburn. He's always Catherine Hepburn. I'll, I'll be bogey, sure. Give me some stilts. I'm a little short. If you ever see pictures of him with his shoes, they, they put huge lifts on yeah, them. platforms. Yeah, yeah with uh, Lauren Bacall because he was pretty short. Oh, huh. I'm yeah. learning something new every day. Yeah. I slapped him right across the face, I did. <laughs> <laughs> I thought when you showed me the words African Queen on that piece of paper, you were just paying me a real nice compliment. Ooh, ooh. <laughs> It goes, it goes both ways. It's a title and a compliment. Um, I'll take it. Isn't that the one where they all got like violently sick except for Hepburn? Yes. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, there's, a good, uh, there's some good movies that kind of chronicle that and uh, behind the scenes things. Um, Matt, uh, what are we looking at with score here? I know it's pretty low. Uh, yes, it is. Pretty, it's, well, not too bad. Uh, the BFFs are up 20 to 10, just edging out Santa's butter currently. All right. Well, we just haven't churned it enough yet, but it'll get there. Mm-hmm. This is this is the oh, that's the dance we're doing. Okay, yeah, it's, it's podcast. We're, not seeing it, but we're churning. churning. We're churning. churning. Ah. This is like an SNL skit. It's like we're churning. We're churning butter. Her her churn is much better. Than it yours. is. It is much better. I've been working <laughs> on it. You I sort of see it as like the, the, the cheerleaders. <laughs> yeah. All right. Number six. Uh yeah. So number six is going to be the category is this or that or that. Okay. Mm-hmm. He married Marilyn Monroe in 1956. His daughter is currently married to Daniel Day-Lewis. Who is this playwright of The Crucible? You're good with that? Mm -hmm. We're locked in. And we're saying Arthur Miller, Jeff? Yep, I believe so. Okay. Yeah, uh, author of one of my favorite plays, kind of a downer, Death of a Salesman. It would be (laughs) Arthur Miller. I I didn't know any, any of that question until she said The Crucible. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, so my mom is... I didn't is... know the part about Daniel Day-Lewis. Oh, did? Yeah, my mom is... Uh... Wait, are we right first? <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. The answer is, is Arthur Miller. <laughs> yeah. So my mom is uh, obsessed with Marilyn Monroe, and ever since I was a kid, I you know saw everything about her, all her movies and stuff. And yeah, she married Arthur Miller, and that was a big deal. A big deal and uh... How about Daniel Day-Lewis being married to his daughter? Yeah. Do you have the original copy that's like of... A, that's <laughs> like the start of a joke. Yeah, it is, actually. You're right. <laughs> He just wanted Arthur Miller to call him like all my son. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's like a deep, stupid <laughs> joke. <laughs> but Not so much a joke, Number but clever. Seven. A theater joke. <laughs> Matt's keeping us on track here. <laughs> all right. Number seven is going to be in science. So I don't know about you, but I always confuse bronze and brass. Uh, I now know that bronze is an alloy of copper and tin, whereas brass is the alloy of copper and zinc. There are other alloys that occur very common uh, commonly but what is stainless steel an alloy of yeah we can I, we can lock in with that i i'm so uh clueless when it comes to the stuff i mean there's no way that's right but also maybe there's one small way that's yeah right. let's go with no that idea. as long as you say it the the british way aluminium yes and iron i don't know did they say iron <laughs> that'd be terrible <laughs> i'm getting a thumbs down from across there <laughs> Yeah, we'll go al- al- aluminum, and I'm saying it. Aluminum and iron. Um, is that what we were thinking? I think uh, iron and titanium we're going to go with. Yeah. I'm good with I'm that. Good with that. Uh, so the answer is actually chromium and iron. Oh. Chromium. Isn't that a, a, a DJ band? Chromium? <laughs> Isn't it? Yeah, right? It's chromio. Chromio. Sorry. Chromio. <laughs> but together, I guess as a plural, yeah. it would be chromium. Yeah. Uh, we're going to do a sports question. Uh, your question is, what NFL player famously returned a fumble 66 yards to the wrong end zone? Oh, Sounds like something I, I would do. I feel so bad for him right now. Isn't there like a mm-hmm. little peewee, uh, NF, or a peewee football video of the little toddler running it? Yeah, there's one of those. And then I just saw one in high school, a, a 
defensive back got an interception and went the complete wrong way, and then his team had to mm. tackle him down before he hit the end zone. <laughs> <laughs> Why is that so sad to me? I love the idea that his team is like, take him down. <laughs> he probably has done so many good things in his life, and that's the thing. Yeah, right. It's going to haunt him. Right. Jeff just lacking with whatever. I have nothing to Yeah, I, I can't remember who did this, um, but I would like to talk about the Mark Sanchez butt fumble. So we're going to go Mark Sanchez. <laughs> uh, we'll have to let Matt answer here, too, uh, just for fun. But we didn't know. Uh, and uh, as Jill pointed out, uh, his last name sort of alludes to the fact that he could have done this. And we put Warren Sapp. <laughs> I don't know if Warren Sapp can run 66 yards. <laughs> <laughs> Touche. Do you know what, Matt? Uh, yeah, it's, I mean, if you don't know it, it's a tough one. I think it's Jim, Jim Marshall and it happened in like a long time ago. Uh, yes. So your correct answer is Jim Marshall. Mm. Mm. All right. So your next question in round one, is going to be in TV on Brooklyn nine, nine captain Holt and his husband, Kevin own an adorable dog. What is the dog's name? And for a bonus, what breed is the dog? We're locked in on both. Oh my god! I know the breed. Oh good. I think I know the breed, and now I'm. I can see the dog. I can see the dog doing dog things. So I haven't seen the show. I, I'm getting to it because I like love the creator. But um, what breed do you think it is? I think it's a corgi. Okay, that makes sense. Okay, and then you think the name is authoritative, like it's Mister Something, or like Professor Something, or <laughs> mm. <laughs> because they're a very like uptight, <laughs> like straight laced couple. Oh okay. Okay. So I feel as though maybe. Oh God, I'm gonna kick myself. Well, corgis—they always talk about like them shaking their butts or whatever. So it'd be like Professor Behind or, or Professor um, like Bum or something. Doctor Wiggles or something. I like, I like that. that. Yeah, that is a very good name for a dog. I'm just gonna say, it yeah, it sounds cute. Let's do Doctor Wiggles, <laughs> and we'll go for the bonus point with um, the corgi. All right, so I hope I'm being a excellent podcaster slash genius here. Uh, and we said uh, Cheddar, who's a Welsh Cheddar, corgi. Cheddar, which is not authoritative. It's not even an authoritative <laughs> cheese. You're absolutely right. <laughs> Uh, yes, uh, the dog's name is Cheddar, and they are specifically a Pembroke Welsh Corgi, but I wasn't going to be that annoying about it, but a Corgi, is sp- I'll take Corgi for the bonus. Sweet. How, ma- how many bonus are we are we raking? Uh, I was going to do two points. Two points, all right. All right. So take your take your two. All right, we'll take the two. We, we will. <laughs> we need it. A rare two points Cheddar. in this game. Uh, yeah, so your final question in round one is once again in food slash drink. So, but this is food. Uh, your question is bechamel, they two two a. I will th- I will spell these out because I cannot speak French, even though I took four years of it. Uh, so bechamel, they two a, espagnol, and hollandaise and tomato are collectively known as what in traditional French cuisine? And uh, they two vel. Velotue is V E L O U T E. We're gonna lock in over here so you guys can discuss. So it's it's like the so, the four main sauce flavor profiles. Oh, is it? I can't I can't remember what they're called. Like the sauces of champions or something. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Let's go with that. Let's go with the sauce of champions. Okay. Or the sauce base. Sauce uh, boss. So, <laughs> We're gonna go to the sauce of champions. Yeah, that was the unfinished Vonnegut book. <laughs> we went uh, with the mother sauces. If Frank Zappa was a line cook, he would make the mothers of sauces. <laughs> 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 All right, and your correct answer is mother sauces. Nice, oh, wow, nice job. Well, at least I kind of knew what it was about. Yeah, you're around. You're around the right uh, area. My uh, mom's a champion, anyways. Yeah, well, that's, that's a nice thing to say. If only you could get her to figure out how to listen to the podcast, she would hear that. <laughs> <laughs> she is not a champion of technology. No. <laughs> All right, Matt, let's get the recap. All right, after round one, it looks like the BFFs are up forty-two uh, to thirty-two for Santa's butter, but it's anyone's game because we have two extra points for some reason. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, let's move on to the swing round. Uh, yes, yeah, yeah. so your swing round category is going to be in history, um, and the way it's going to work is I, like I have that. a list of king or king consorts and a list of queens and qu- or queen consorts, and I want you to match the king to the queen. Mm. Now, so is... anybody who knows me understands my love of like medieval history, <laughs> so this is going to be pretty 
medieval renaissance heavy. Okay, so the kings will represent questions one through ten. Yes. And then the uh, and then I'll give you a list of the queens, and I want you to match them. Okay. And this is Just literally... Just me right now. Yeah, this is Ken's literal, like, kryptonite. Is anything to do with monarchy. <laughs> so, number one is Henry VIII of England. Two is Edward IV of England. Three is Henry II of England. Four is Louis the Sixteenth of France. Five is George the Sixth of England. Six is Francis the Second of France. Six is James the First of England. Eight is Joffrey Plantagenet. Nine is Emperor Peter the Third. And, and ten is Philip the Second of Spain. Um, yep. So your list of queens or queen consorts are uh, Elizabeth Woodville, Mary the First. Marie Antoinette, Elizabeth Bowes, Mary Queen of Scots, Matilda, Catherine II, also known as the Great, Anne of Denmark, Eleanor of Aquitaine, and Catherine Howard. As we're thinking about these answers, let's uh, drop let's drop the trailer for the Beyonce. So do you want to lead us in for this? Yeah, it's called, so again? It's called Making Beyonce, and uh, WBZ Podcast has had two kind of volumes of the Making series. They did Making uh, Oprah and Making Obama. Okay. So this seemed like the next logical step. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so basically, we're, we're finding out about Beyonce before she became Beyonce. Yeah. We, you know, the, the pre-Destiny's Child Beyonce, uh, you know, little kid with big dreams and... Uh, her parents who had somehow even bigger dreams and it's it's been really fun to dive into all of this honestly we find out a lot about her teachers and her contemporaries and this like unworldly work ethic that she's had since like the first grade all right cool let's check out that trailer Beyonce was born on September 4th 1981 I'll never forget it Leave those bees alone, Beyonce. Beyonce had the soul. That soul thing that uh, that you just can't buy. I told Tina and I told Matthew, this child can sing, Beyonce can sing. And they said, yeah. The winner is Beyonce Knowles, female pop vocalist. Beyonce, people don't know, like, the way she was today is the way she was when she was little. If we keep on performing, every time we get better and the stage fright just fades away. Fades away. And the Grammy goes to... And the Grammy goes to... Do you want to do it? Uh, you take one. Okay. Halo. I'm Jill Hopkins, and on a new season of Making, the story of how the biggest name in modern music... It's really rare when you find somebody that knows what they want and then knows how to hit the mark became the biggest name in modern music. From WBEZ uh, Chicago, shake it, uh, making Beyonce. Uh, shake it, Beyonce uh, uh, coming soon. Uh, uh, Subscribe now so you don't miss an episode. All right, we are back from the swing round. All the answers are locked in. So uh, let's get to these monarchs one more time, and we'll uh, tell you who we thought they were married to. Uh, yes, so number one was Henry VIII of England. Ken thought this was a Howard, so we said Catherine Howard. We also went with Catherine Howard. And the correct answer is Catherine Howard. Mm. Once again, six the musical helped me out there. Yeah, I learned a thing on this <laughs> podcast. All right, number two was Edward IV of England. Uh, we said uh, Anne of Denmark. All right. Uh, we didn't uh, really know on this one. We kind of took a guess, and uh, we said it was the great, great, great grandmother of Jimmy Bose. So we went <laughs> Elizabeth Bose. The answer is Elizabeth Woodville. Oh, oh dang I, it. I felt so <laughs> that was There's actually a mini series on stars that's based on Philip Gregory novel called The White Queen. It's all about her, and it's it's pretty good. So. <sighs> He had us there. I was so excited when you said Elizabeth. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> All right. Number three is Henry the Second of England. Uh, we guessed Eleanor of Aquitaine. So did we. And I think that's something I learned listening to the show. Yep. The correct answer is Eleanor of Aquitaine. That makes one of us. I was going to say, I'm glad you, <laughs> you learned it. I didn't. So. Yeah. Ours was a guess. Uh, and number four is Louis the Sixteenth of France. 
Uh, we said, let us have points. And we said, Marie Antoinette. And we said, uh, actually, did not say that. We said Marie Antoinette. (laughs) (laughs) Yep, the correct answer is Marie Antoinette. Uh, Number five is George VI of England. Um, We think this is um, Queen Elizabeth's mother, and I think she was also called Elizabeth. So we said uh, Elizabeth Bowes. We had the same logic, but we guessed the wrong Elizabeth. This is where we had uh, Woodville. Mm Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, the correct answer is Elizabeth Bowes. Uh, and number six is Francis II of France. Uh, didn't know. Uh, we thought this sounded French, so we said Matilda. Hmm. Uh, yeah, we, we didn't know either, so we just went with Catherine II. Uh, yeah, so it's actually Mary, Queen of Scots. No. This was her first husband. Yep. Uh, number seven is James I of England. Well, that's going to make this one awkward because uh, I thought... He was married to Mary, Queen of Scots. Yeah, we shipped them, too. I, I wouldn't, because that's her son. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's right. I knew they were close, but not in a way I thought. Oh, back then, was, uh, you know, I mean, the, really. the lines were blurred. That's okay. <laughs> the answer here is Anne of Denmark. Mm. Uh, number eight is Joffrey Plantagenet. Uh, we said Mary won. Uh, we went with, yeah, Mary won. This is actually Matilda. Mm. Uh, so this was in the 1100s. This is like the way back reach. Um, so she is a claimant to the throne. She was like kind of like, you know, Lady Jane Grey, the nine days queen. But she was like bef- way before her. Um, she overthrew her uh, uncle Stephen and tried to take the throne and it didn't go well. But her son, Henry II, did eventually take the throne. But that's Empress Matilda. So is the, is the nine days queen sort of like the Britney Spears marriage of older year? Yeah, only there is much more death. Mm. <laughs> yeah, she, she, was, she, was, she was very dead at the end of that nine days. Mm. Um, number nine is Emperor Peter III. Uh, we think he was from Russia. So we said Catherine the Great. We gave him to Anne of Denmark. Uh, yep, the correct answer there is Catherine the Second or Catherine the Great. All right, and your last one, which is Philip II of Spain. All right, mathematically, we have to get this one wrong, so we said Elizabeth Woodville. Yes, and we uh, thought Matilda was sort of an outlier of the names, and we thought uh, it sounded kind of cool, so we went with Spain, so we went Philip II. Uh, yep, so this is actually Mary I. Um, she, she was the actual queen of England, Mary, Bloody Mary, same person, um, and then she married Philip of Spain. He came over and married her. After the swing round now, BFFs are lengthening their lead over the butter right now. It's a 67 to 47, but still a close game. Before we start the second round, just wanted to say thank you to Caitlin and Jill for supporting us on Patreon. We really appreciate uh, your support over there and helping us keep the show growing and and getting better and thriving. And Jeff, uh, a lot of different perks people can get from Patreon itself, but also from our, our website and our merchandise. Can you talk a little bit about that? I think you covered it. I did. Mm-hmm. But, yeah, we've had a lot of new uh, patrons lately, so we hope they're all out there enjoying those bonus episodes and all the other things that come along with being a Patreon member. Yes, that's correct, Matt. Uh, there's a lot of bonus episodes, some darker than others, some uh, after dark episodes, uh, but we try to split uh, trivia and our personality you don't get to hear on the show. Uh, we, did on a, those. we did a Know Your Boo. Did a Know Your Boo. We did. Did you uh, say we get to split our personalities? Uh, did I? Oh, maybe. Uh, I said we'd split between trivia and personality. Ah, okay. Yes. Um, but yeah, there's a lot of cool stuff over there. Uh, and uh, for those people at the Intercontinental Champion level, uh, all of you should be have or should have gotten your boxes, uh, which are choose your own character boxes from all of us that we curate ourselves. And uh, those of you who have posters, I hope you're enjoying them and hanging them up. Or if you're burning them, at least videotaping it and hashtagging us on Twitter. So, thank you. Uh, round two, question one is in pop culture. Yay. A record previously held by Kylie Jenner. A picture of this object became the most liked photo ever on Instagram. I really don't know. Or a cat. Let's say, let's say some uh, lip gloss. Okay. Cats are not objects, Jeff. So my lip gloss be cool, my lip gloss be poppin'. Mm. Anyone? Little mama. Yeah, thank yes. you. Yeah. Little mama. I hear you. Uh, Matt got it, too. Uh, I, I don't know what, what the object would be. <laughs> I remember this happening and i remember it being like a very like innocuous thing like just your everyday object that was like just like this picture for the hell of it it was so dumb <laughs> that it went in one it's ear like and the right potato out the other. salad guy yeah right yeah 
Yeah, maybe we just go stapler because it's a nice reference to uh, office space, too. Like my stapler. <laughs> we're going to put you in the basement, okay? <laughs> uh, yeah, we're going to go stapler. Uh, yeah, so the answer is actually a picture of an egg. An egg. An egg. Oh. Mm. Uh, yeah, so question number two in round two is going to be in uh, is a tri-bond. Okay. So I'm going to name three actors or actresses, uh, and I want you to name the movie they all starred in together. So your uh, actors are Leonardo DiCaprio, Martin Sheen, and Christopher Walken. We're good. We're locked in over here. That's okay, Jill. Yeah. Uh, so Ken and I uh, think this is Catch Me If You Can. Two mice in a bucket of cream. <laughs> I, I'm not going to do the whole speech, but yes, Catch Me If You Can. <laughs> Did they churn some butter? <laughs> <laughs> mm-hmm. it. Yeah. Oh yeah, Martin Sheen is, is uh, yeah. Amy Adams' dad or something. Catch me if you can. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Yeah, he's the one to get some uh, the lawyer job. Mm, that's right. Okay. Do you yeah. concur? Right. Yeah, Leonardo DiCaprio literally passed the bar <laughs> for that movie, so I concur. <laughs> Thank you. Do you <laughs> Ken got it. I'm not giving it to you. <laughs> All right. Uh, your next question in the round is in music. A gold record is awarded today for artists that sell 500,000 units. Um, Today, many people go double platinum, but who was the first person to earn a RIAA certified gold record for his song, Catch a Falling Star? I really don't know this one. This is one I've heard. It's up to you, Jeff. I don't remember it. Uh, This is something that should be in my brain somewhere, but I'm not getting. Great record, Dewey. Oh, you know, you go go platinum, and you go double platinum. There's triple platinum, and there's there's quadruple platinum, right? <laughs> I've never heard catch a falling. S- yeah, I mean that's that that'd be a safe bet. Yeah, I. But it doesn't feel it doesn't feel good to it my. It doesn't heart. feel good to my heart either. Maybe we should just go with it though. I. It's it. It's a safe one. To just throw an Elvis out, lucky sure. Elvis. Yeah. We also locked in with Elvis. Uh, the answer is Perry Como. Um, uh, it was in 1958. Perry Como. I, I think I knew what you were saying when you said it didn't feel good in your heart. <laughs> so I picked up on that a little. But I'm glad that this that missing that question didn't cost me any like street cred or yeah, anything like yeah. that. I'm still good out, <laughs> out in the hood. <laughs> no, but nobody's putting you on blast for missing a Perry Como question. <laughs> <laughs> she sold out, man. <laughs> <laughs> All right, your next uh, category is in TV. Uh, the Dublin Murders is a series that is set to premiere on Stars uh, actually today. Um, it is based on the Dublin Murder Squad book series by this well known mystery writer, known for her New York Times bestselling books, In the Woods. And the likeness. I don't know. I, I I doubt it's her, but I mean, Agatha Christie's one of the most famous mystery okay, writers. So. Fine. I, I figured it was more contemporary, but let's do it. Done. Uh, yeah, I'm not sure on this one. Um, what did you write down? You said Ma- is that Mary with <laughs> Mary, three names. Mary three names. Good old Mary three names. I don't know. I'm I'm thinking of yeah. I'm, my brain is is thinking contemporary authors uh, of the mystery genre. Otherwise, it would be like. I'm thinking Agatha Christie, but like a modern day right. Agatha Christie. I, I've heard of the Mary's series. Not, uh, Mary Stuart Masterson is not right, but like it, no. like it wants. To, it's just like Mary something something. Elizabeth Wollstonecraft. <laughs> Mary Elizabeth Winston. <laughs> yeah, right. Mary J. Blige. <laughs> Mary J. Blige. <laughs> Mary Catherine Gallagher. Uh, yeah, Mary Stuart Masterson. Yeah, that's, that's cool. she, fine. She, maybe she became an author <laughs> after all the John Hughes movies. Who knows? And we're going with Agatha Christie. Uh, yep. So my sneaky literature question that I put in a TV category. Uh, the answer is Tana French. Oh. oh. Mm-hmm. Well. It is a contemporary author. She has a bunch of books out there, but she mainly writes about Dublin murders. <laughs> now she's not related to Queer Eyes Tan France. Is that correct? <laughs> No. Okay. <laughs> Not French Stewart either. No. I do love the French tuck, though. Do you like the French tuck? French tuck. Yeah. I think he uses it just a little too much, but I appreciate the French it, tuck. It, it fixes any wardrobe uh, issue. All right. Your next category is sports. Uh, 
Also known as the Triple Crown of Cycling, the Grand Tour is made up of three stage cycling races. The Tour de France is arguably the most famous of these races, but name either one of the other two. Tour de Forest Preserve. <laughs> <laughs> that's just, the I'm Tan, Jeff, the Jeff tan and de Ken's. France. Yeah, let's, let's go with that. <laughs> the Tan de France. We're going to go with the Tan de France. <laughs> with, that, with that really difficult turn of the French tuck. <laughs> That's what they call it, yeah. Um, so they would. I think there's one in Spain. I was thinking something like Tour de España. I, w- I seriously like was going to say Tour de España, or Tour de España. Let's go. Just want to go for it? Yeah. Okay. Well, how, what would uh, <laughs> Antonio <laughs> think of that? Well, you get on the bikes and you go around the circles, and then your nose gets congested, and you have flones. <laughs> Oh my god. And join me every week on NPR. <laughs> <laughs> All right, is everybody locked in? Yeah. I'm sorry. We're I'm the not... Tan de France and you're the uh, We're Tour de España. Tour de España. Uh yes. So although close, Neil, it is not Tour de España because Tour de is French. So you gotta go the Volta a España, which is mm. the Tour of Spain, or the Giro d'Italia, which is mm. the Tour of Italy. Mm. We are we are Good close. Effort. We're close. I like where your head's at, though. Yeah. yeah. Seems like yeah. all those places have too much elevation to bike. So. Yeah. Where's all the? That's sounds the challenge. Sad, <laughs> sounds tough. All the breathing Tour problems. Towards Nebraska. Too difficult. <laughs> yeah. Right. Tour to Iowa City uh, is I'm not quite the Tour to Florida. Just flat terrain the whole time. Uh. Oh, <laughs> just gotta uh, avoid the Gators. Matt, uh, what, what are we looking like after five here in the second round? Um, after five, you've each gained ten points. It is now seventy-seven or seventy-seven to fifty-seven. All right. So your next question is in geography. With eruptions dating back to fifteen hundred BC, what is the world's oldest active volcano? We'll we'll lock in over here. I we just kind of took a guess. Okay. So what were you thinking, Ken? Uh, I put Mount St. Helens, but I really don't know at all. What's the What's the famous one in in Italy? Dante's Peak. <laughs> yeah, Dante's Peak now. Um, was it Vesuvius that erupted famously? Mm. Yeah, I don't know if it's active. I don't think so. That's what I, one I was trying to get out of my head. We can go Mount St. Helens. Okay, that's what we'll do. Um, do you think volcanoes go to the doctor and the doctor's like, are you active? Oh my God. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> uh, we both wrote down the same thing. And uh, and I it, this these questions always really bug not bug me in a bad way but just I can never get them because all I think of is movies and every movie that has volcanoes always says it's the it's the oldest active volcano ever and it, they always change the name so I never can remember. <laughs> um, but yeah, we said uh, we said Mount St. Helens. Mount St. Helens, yeah. Uh, yeah. So this one is actually a uh, super volcano that is or stratovolcano, whatever you want to call it. It's a stratovolcano. Uh, in Italy, but it is actually not Vesuvius. It's called Mount Etna. Oh. It's uh, it's off the coast of Sicily. <laughs> uh, and this next category is in TV. Uh, so Murder, She Wrote was a TV show about murder mystery author J.B. Fletcher. She lives in this small town in Maine with a crazy high murder rate. Oh, God. Yeah, this Can is you remember ass, it? I think. Murder Hollow. Stab City. <laughs> Stab. <laughs> Every week we come to Stab City. <laughs> we expect different results. She found she found the right town for it. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. I I'm gonna whatever you want to write down. I'm good with because I. I Bangor is as good as anything. Okay. They could have called the show Murder She Bangor, and that would have been a whole different. <laughs> <kind of. laughs> that'd be a much. That'd be a that'd be a Cinemax special. Uh, uh, starring okay. Sharon Stone. I don't even think it's a real town in Maine. But I can't remember the name New of it. Newcastle. I mean, I, I don't mind Castle Rock. It's something weird like I that. I said Newcastle. Newcastle it is. Newcastle. Uh, yeah. So the answer is Cabot Cove. It mm. is a fictional town in Maine. That's right. All right. Your next category is history. Uh, though, though awarded posthumously, he is the only president to ever be awarded the Medal of Honor. This was bestowed upon him because of his famous charge up a hill. You just want to go with that? Sure. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, probably not Washington. Who was at Bunker Hill? Probably not Washington. Fair enough. <laughs> um, Jackson. Um, Harrison fought. Uh, Grant was a general. Yeah. I wrote um, Harrison too. Kennedy. 
though he was a navy man yeah i don't think i don't think he'd have done right, that so ike was really never on the field yeah, he was yeah, um well, well I, I'm, maybe at one point well yeah he was he was in i think north africa um, okay so what do you think about was there was grant did grant lead a charge in the civil war possibly hmm let's go with grant i mean we're talking on our asses but we'll go grant I was going to talk to you about this, but I, I have no knowledge of it. I think when we were in Boston for Geek Bowl, there's, is it Bunker Hill that we, we visited? It had that big light uh, yeah. statue. Yeah. And I remember we read all the stuff there in the freezing cold, and I can't remember what person was on the... the uh, you know. But if you recall, it was actually Breed's Hill. Oh, that's right. Yeah. That's right. Um, but we, we both wrote down Teddy Roosevelt right away because we figured he would do something Famous like for that. the Battle of Bunker Hill. That's right. Oh. <laughs> so, yeah, that's what we went with. Uh, yeah, so your correct answer is Teddy Roosevelt. Ooh, yeah, nice. Uh, and this was for his charge dur- uh, up San Juan Hill. Because mm-hmm. mm-hmm. yeah. I can picture him in like his mustache and his old like khaki jacket mm-hmm. and like a sword, just Spanish yeah. being all being all toxic. <laughs> yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. but like getting the job done. Yeah, with his toxic <laughs> the other, masculinity. The, the other Roosevelt didn't charge up any hills. No. Oh. Oh. Not Come on, man. Ones. The man had polio. Come on. <laughs> that was the uh, Spanish-American War then? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, yep. And your second to last uh, question in the round is in science. Uh, when a molecule has an asymmetric carbon center, this property can occur. It is also referred to as a right hand or left hand molecules or non superimposable molecules. What is the name of this property? Let's just go with that. That's better than I came up with. Yeah, chemistry failed me as well. So uh, I put pH scale. What do you think, Jeff? Um, I don't think so. I'm trying to think of what an asymmetric Ionize- ion, ion, not ions. Um, I mean, it could be polarized, maybe. I mean, if it's got, if, it, if it's asymmetrical, it's possible it's polarized. Okay, I don't know. Let's, let's say that. Let's say polarization. And we said in the same vein, magnetism. Uh, yeah, so the property is actually called chirality mm-hmm. or chiral molecules. Mm-hmm. Uh, something I remember learning in, um, this was in college chemistry, but freshman year. So, But it's all about how, like, similar to your right hand, left hand, they, are, they look like exact copies, but they're actually opposite mm-hmm. because of the asymmetric center. Okay. So, mm-hmm. all right, your final question of the round is in art. Uh, what art movement developed in the early 18th century as a reaction against the grandeur and symmetry and strict regulations of the Baroque period? Uh, this movement is characterized by ornate light-colored works depicting love and nature. What is the movement? Okay, we're going to lock in. I, yeah, I don't know. What do you think? Impressionism, I guess? Because that would be mm. like, uh, Impressionism would be like uh, flower lilies, but it also could be people wa- like I don't right. know, in love. Yeah, I guess. ballerinas and whatnot. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we'll go Impressionism. Uh, yeah, we said the same thing. If if you're kind of breaking from strict rules and you're just kind of getting an impression of what you're looking at and trying to paint that, you're going with Impressionism. Uh, yep. So the correct answer here is actually Rococo. Oh, mm. I've gotten like 10 questions wrong about Rococo so many times. <laughs> you're a pretty good Impressionist, right, Neil? <laughs> Not as good. I, I'm good from far away. <laughs> Not up close. <laughs> <laughs> that's a good art joke i like that one all right matt uh looks like that ended the second round in regulation so how are we looking uh going into the final round all right the score is going into the final round is bfff the extra f stands for first place right now they have <laughs> 77 points uh santa's butter right behind it 67 anyone's game and uh caitlin what are our categories today So along the same lines of uh, what we were talking about before when I was introduced about doing a half Iron Man, I have a theme running through these. So uh, your first category is swim. Second category is bike. Third category is run. Fourth category is beer. And fifth category is sleep. Okay, all the wagers are now in. So let's get the questions and uh, wrap this game up. All right, your uh, first question is in the category swim. Otitis externa, I will will spell it for you, has been known to affect many a swimmer since you are submerged a lot during practices and swim meets. What part of the body does otitis externa affect? 
That's O T I T I S. And externa is E X T E R N A. Question number two in the category of bike. In a traditional set of bicycle playing cards, which is the only queen in the deck that faces to the right? Question number three is in the category run. The plot of the movie Chicken Run centers around a band of chickens who see a rooster named Rocky as their only hope to escape a farm where the owners are trying to turn them into chicken pies. The movie is re- was released in 2000 as a joint between DreamWorks and the British studio Ardman Animations. Who is Ardman Animations is more well known for what similarly animated characters? Question number four is category beer. Some of the most well-known draft horses are the Budweiser Clydesdales. Their breed is only the second largest on average measuring 16.1 to 18 hands or 3.3, uh, 5.3 feet to 6 feet. The largest breed measures 17 to 19 hands, although has been known to reach 21.2 hands, which is about 7.18 feet. That's way larger than a hobbit. What is the what is this large breed of horse? All right, and your final question is in sleep. Most people have heard of REM sleep, which is a unique phase of sleep in mammals and birds. But what does REM stand for? Okay, we'll mull these over and we'll be back with our answers. Okay, all the answers are locked in, so let's go ahead and get the questions one more time. We'll find out how it all shakes out. Uh, Yeah, question one in the category swim was, Otis's externa has been known to affect many a swimmer. Since you are submerged a lot during practices and swim meets, what body part does Otis's externa affect? Uh, We wagered 10 here, and we think this is the skin because we think you're talking about the... uh... The pruny fingers and toes. Oh. oh. Okay. Uh, we went with uh, ears. For five. Uh, the correct answer is ears. Nice. Mm. It's known as swimmer's ear. Because I have a mild case of tinnitus, and I was looking into that otitious word. Maybe they have the same. Yeah, we were looking at root. the externa. Ah, uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, your second category is in bike. And the question is, in a traditional set of bicycle playing cards, which is the only queen in the deck that faces to the right? Uh, For another 10, we figure the queen of hearts is usually the uh, special exception. So, Mm. hearts. Yeah, we wagered zero, and we weren't sure, but we both wrote down spade. So, queen of spades. Uh, Your answer is queen of spades. Oh, we're getting killed. What the hell? Should have wagered. We should have. All right, and your third question in the category run. The plot of the movie Chicken Run centers on a band of chickens who see a, who see a rooster named Rocky as their only hope to escape the farm where their owners would prepare them into chicken pies. The movie was released in 2000 as a joint between DreamWorks and British studio Ardman Animations, who is more well known for what similarly animated characters. All right, uh, we started disastrously, but we're pretty sure on this one that it's uh, Wallace and Gromit. We also said Wallace and Gromit. For 10. For 5 For over five, here? yeah. Uh, yep, the correct answer is Wallace and Gromit. I was hoping you were going to say it about uh, our grammar school. Our teacher, maybe not you, our English teacher, anytime we had a break, she'd always put on Wallace and Gromit. Who? We'll talk about it later, but yes, I, did, I thought I, I was betting them that you were going to go on and go I'm back in grammar school. No, I mean, I remember watching it as a kid. Oh, okay. All right. And your fourth question in the final is in the category beer. Some of the most well-known draft horses are the Budweiser Clydesdales. Their breed is only the second largest on average measuring 16.1 to 18 hands. The largest breed measures about 17 to 19 hands, but has known known to reach 21.2 hands. That's way larger than a hobbit. What is this large breed of horse? Okay, for another 10 points. Um, Red Dead uh, Redemption 2 did not help me here. Um, We thought that when you say hobbit, you were saying uh, Shire would be in the uh, title somewhere. Jeff said his uncle, was it? Yeah, my great uncle. Yeah, okay. he ra- he raised Belgians, so I thought those were bigger than Clydesdales. So we said the Belgian Shire. It's a pretty cool name. Uh, we we wager ten. It's my um, new, new band coming out, Belgian <laughs> Shire. We were thinking uh, as long as you're barefoot. We were thinking that uh, 
that your beer knowledge, uh, Jill, would help us here. But it did not. Did not. Um, <laughs> we kind of just went through Lord of the Rings. And I don't know much about Lord of the Rings. We said, you know, Gandalf the Grey. Maybe it's a gray type horse, something gray. Uh, we went through all the Hobbit's names. And we said, what's bigger than a Hobbit? Aragorn was bigger than a Hobbit. And Aragorn <laughs> sounds like a really badass horse. So that's what we went with. Uh, yeah. So your correct answer is Shire. Um, I am going to give it to you guys, even though Belgian is a separate horse, Belgian Shire. It, I'll, I'll, get, I'll be lenient and give you the points there because um, it's just called a Shire horse. Okay. It is very close going into this last question, just so you guys know. Okay. All right. And your final uh, question is in the category sleep. Uh, most people have heard of REM sleep, which is a unique phase of sleep in mammals and birds. What does REM stand for? All right. For our last uh, 10 points, rapid eye movement. We had five points in rapid eye movement. Uh, yep. The correct answer is rapid eye movement. All right, Matt. How are these scores looking? All right. After adding it all up, it looks like the extra F and BFFF. S is actually finishing strong. They finished with an extra 30 points down the stretch with 87, just 72 to Santa's butter. So Jeff and Ken are today's cream of the crop. The cream of the crop. All right. Ooh. Good game. Yeah. Thanks, guys. That was a lot of fun. That was so fun. Yeah. Good game. Oh my gosh. Got real close there at the end. It did. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe we should, we should call it a draw because of that uh, Belgian thing. What do you think, Neil? Oh, oh, it would have been closer. Should we call it a draw? Yeah, let's call it a draw. First ever draw. We would have lost, actually. We would have. <laughs> <laughs> we still would not have. But let's call it a draw. Everyone's the cream of the crop today. Yeah, everyone's Yay. the cream of the crop. Yay. Caitlin, this for is... questions. Jill, for joining us. Yes, Thank thanks so much. Guys. I had so much fun, Caitlin. It was such a fun game. It was nice to meet you. Oh, thanks. Nice to meet you, too. <laughs> so, uh, Jill, uh, where can people find you and, and how can they listen to you? Uh, they can follow me on all the socials at Jill Hopkins, uh, J-I-L-L-H-O-P-K-I-N-S. Uh, they can visit Vocalo, V-O-C-A-L-O dot org uh, uh, every Monday through Friday from 8 to 10 a.m. to hear the morning amp. And uh, WBEZ's uh, podcast series, Making Beyonce, will be available everywhere by the time this, uh, this drops. And you can go to WBEZ dot org to hear that. Awesome. Well, thank you very much for joining us. We thank we're you. so happy to have you reach out to us on Twitter and uh, and you have uh, you know four new fans of yours. So that's great. So we can't wait to hear more. You guys. Uh, and Caitlin, uh, thank you also for writing this awesome game. Like we said, even though we didn't get a lot of them right, uh, we learned some great <laughs> things. Uh, so what can uh, what else can you tell us about uh, what's going on with your life, or is there anything you'd like to plug? Uh, yeah, I mean, I'm in the Arlington, uh, Virginia area, and I do host trivia where I don't write the questions, but I do host it uh, <laughs> in Fairfax, Virginia at on Monday nights at 7 p.m. at Ornery Brewery. So if anybody's in the area, please come out and see me. All right. Ornery Brewery, the only brewery that Jeff will go to. Uh, well thank you thank you very much uh, Caitlin uh, for those and thank you both for your Patreon support um, you know we always say it means a lot because it does but it really does uh, you know it, it means so much so thank you very much for that uh, and Matt uh, any last words there out in LA no I don't get last words I'm, I'm good alright we'll leave those to Lawrence O'Donnell uh, for uh, Matt Ken Jeff Jill and Caitlin my name is Neil and that was Triviality Hey, it's, as the Olsen twins taught us, it takes two. Yeah. <laughs> I like pizza. <laughs> that video never gets old. Pizza. pizza. It's so disturbing. <sighs>